I ran and I ran and I ran and I ran and I ran until there I was. Robin Hood, lost in Sherwood Forest. It was then that I heard the crack of twigs underfoot. Somebody was coming toward me. Was it friend or was it foe? From out of the misty moon stepped a foe. It wasn't the sheriff. It was his henchman. He looked as white as I am. He said to me, hey, don't worry, let's find your friends. So the two of us walked through Sherwood until we found my friends. The merry men didn't look so merry, they were hiding behind a bush. And there was the sheriff of Nottingham pacing up and down. And then I saw him reach up into a tree and grab a slim branch and eh, 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 snap. He pulled that branch right off. And then he went to my tent and he took the branch, he lifted it high in the air and he clubbed my tent. I said, hey, that's my tent. He looked at me and said, you better be quiet. Otherwise, I'll hit you again. It was as if. Robin Hood and the Merry Men had all come to witness this because the forest went deathly quiet. You could have heard a pin drop. The goosebumps were starting to come up on my arms. And then there was an almighty wind. It blew so hard it nearly knocked me off my She put feet. him in the crib. And that night, when she fell fast asleep, the queen stole into the bedchamber. She took the boy and climbed to the tallest tower. And when she got there, she threw the boy off. Way below was a waiting wolf, its jaws open, and it caught the babe. And now the queen came back into Rosa's bedchamber and she took the blood from a dead dog and she smeared it on Rosa's hands and on her face and she cried, Murder! Rose has killed her baby! All of the court came running and they shouted, Kill her! Hang her! Burn her! And they would have done, except the prince stepped forward and said, Stop! I don't believe it. I don't believe Rose would harm our son. I don't know what happened here, but I know Rose didn't do it. And so Rose was left to live. You imagine the pain in her heart losing her son and not being able to make a single sound. When deer arrived, she showed off her legs. <laughs> when Bushbuck arrived, he showed off his horns. When Jaguar arrived, she showed off her claws. And when Chimp arrived, well, he came in. Arms everywhere, right ready to show his strength. And then man sauntered in. Hello, man. Hello, I'm here to show you I am the strongest. And the competition began. It was Chip's turn. <laughs> <laughs> Up the tree he went and <laughs> he bent the tree right over with <laughs> He bent another one, he tied a knot. <laughs> <laughs> and the animal said, Strength! Strength! That is strength! I'll climb a tree. Chimpanzee, climb a tree. I can climb a tree. That's that, that strength, yeah. That's strength. Strength. And the animals went, no man that's climbing a tree and hanging from the branch, but not really strength. You want to see strength, do you? Well, I'll show you strength. And he ran out of the forest. They 
waited for him to come back, which he did. And when he came back, he came with a gun. Gwion back started to run, and with his newfound knowledge, he transformed himself into a hare, and he bounded down the mountain. Keredwin changed herself into a hound, and she came ever the closer. Now, on his tail, Gwion back jumped into the river, and he turned himself into a salmon, and he swam away. Keridwen transformed herself into an otter, and she swam after him, coming ever the closer. As he leapt out of the water as a salmon, he changed himself into a dove, and he rose higher and higher and higher. Keridwen, she shapeshifted into the red-tailed hawk. And she rose high above him, ready to swoop down on her prey. With his last energy, he changed himself into a single grain of corn. And he buried himself into the earth. Herodot, she changed herself into a black hen. And she pecked, and she pecked, and she pecked at that earth until she found that single grain of corn. And she swallowed him right. And you must also agree to go through the veil in a different shape. OK, said Ragnell. But she had no idea what shape the Lady of the Lake meant. She came crawling on all fours, snorting, and she had tusks. She was an old sow. She'd come through as an old sow. How on earth would Gwen fall in love with an old sow? This wasn't part of the bargain. And so she used what little magic she had to at least stand on two legs. Change her image a bit. Wasn't much. Oh no, she still had whacking great tusks, a bearded face, a piggy snout, and five bellies that rolled over so she couldn't see her ankles that she knew were swelling by the second. A woman went to the doctors when she was eight months pregnant, and the doctor was very callous, very hard. He looked at her and he said, Your baby's dead going to be stillborn. And the mother said, I don't believe you. I believe I'm having a son and I believe he's alive. Well, the mother proved the doctors wrong because she gave birth to a baby boy, but there were complications right from the word go. He was born feet first with the umbilical cord wrapped around his neck. He came out a deep purple. He was so fragile that the doctors said he would not live through the night. He was too fragile for the mother to hold. All she could do was lay beside him and talk to him. And she said, you can do whatever is in your heart, whatever is in your mind. And the little boy proved the doctors wrong, because he lived.